Day, who's here, thank God for him, and to my grandparents, Deacon Ernest Davis and Sister Doris Davis, I thank God. And also, I would just like to thank you, Holy Temple, for all that you've done and all that you continue to do, and how you just really just came through and, and really helped us get these shirts, and uh, it makes my heart really glad, especially yeah. on the turnout that we had with the barbecue and Friday night, and even going a little bit further back to the youth retreat back in April, and how you guys came and donated and helped for our children to get there and be at Mount Airy. It really makes my heart glad. I, I appreciate it from the bottom Amen. of my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, um, I'm not going to be before you all. Uh, the, scripture, the scripture was read uh, earlier by Sister Madison, but we're going to read it again for those who weren't able to hear it. Before we read, I'm just Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity. Lord God, I ask that you would allow me to be your peace. I thank you, thank you, so God. Lord God, let your word go forth with power. And we bind every enemy device that's being sent to try to uh, be a hindrance to the work of God. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, let your spirit bring down on all of us. Give us a double portion, oh God. Heal, set free, and deliver. Whatever the needs that need to be met today, oh God, I ask that you would fix it, just like it ought to be fixed. And we thank you, God, for what you've done and what you're going to continue to do. And rejoice ahead of time for the miracle that you are going to perform. I'm not sure who needs who needs the healing, who needs the miracle, who needs the blessing, but God, whoever it is, you fix it. And you do like you always do. And Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, you can turn with me to book of Joshua, beginning at the 11th chapter, and it's going to be from verses 4 to 6. And while you, while you look at that, I'm going to help myself get to the mindset to preach. Uh, have a little preaching worship before we get to the scripture. Mm -hmm. What more can he do? Fight against Israel. Then the 
And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid. Mm. Because of For tomorrow about this time, this time will I deliver them up all slain before Israel. Mm. Thou shalt hold their horses and burn their chariots mm. with fire. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Be not afraid because of them. For tomorrow about this time, this time. will I deliver them up, up all slain before Israel. Ah. Saints of God, if I can just give you just a few minutes with the topic of get ready for tomorrow. Ah. Get ready, get ready. for tomorrow. tomorrow. Joshua and the children of Israel are up against serious opposition against an alliance that has been formed by the northern armies to take down Israel. The Israelites are fresh off a hard-fought battle, which is in the previous chapter of Joshua, chapter 10, mm -hmm. against all of the southern armies. With the favor of God on Joshua and the rest of the children of Israel, they were victorious. Yes. And Joshua killed all five of the kings that represented each southern army. Mm. And where we're at in our text today, word has gotten back to King Jabin that the Israelites have defeated the southern armies. Mm. He sends messages to every king in the northern region of the events that have transpired. Mm. And as all the kings received the messages, they all decided to join and fight against Israel. Mm -hmm. The army showed up at Moram and set up camp to be ready to partake in battle. The Bible compares the size of this massive army that was formed by the north as sand on a seashore. The Israelites were outnumbered in every way possible. There was no possible way that they could actually win this battle. Mm. Joshua and the children of Israel were waiting and watching the northern army set up camp in front of them. Mm. As they pitched their tents in, gathered their materials and got their horses in formation. The Lord spoke to Joshua and said, be not afraid of them. By tomorrow, this time, I will deliver them up all slain before you. Joshua needed a fresh confirmation of God's promise for his life. And the Lord was faithful to bring it. This attack against Joshua was new and more severe than the previous challenges. He told him not to be afraid because this fear means that it was an issue for Joshua and the people of Israel. God has a reason for everything he does and he, we would, he would not have assured them to not be afraid unless there was a reason for encouragement. Tomorrow stands out to me in this text because it's a small but pivotal confirmation that change is coming and is coming quickly. There's an old saying that a lot can happen between today and tomorrow. The word tomorrow used in our uh, English language is functions as an adverb or a noun. An example of using it as an adverb would be, I'll finish the housework tomorrow, or he has an interview tomorrow. And when you use tomorrow as a noun in a sense, it sounds like, who knows what tomorrow may bring? or all we can do is hope for a better tomorrow. No matter how tomorrow is used, whether it's an adverb or a noun, it still represents a period of change. God was letting Joshua know that it was not necessary for him to go out and fight at that moment because he was already working on his behalf. Although Joshua's circumstances look, circumstance looked one way, the next day the Lord told him it would be completely different. God was telling Joshua to prepare for tomorrow because he already knew what was coming to pass. Surely we all can thank God for this because although we don't know what may come tomorrow, but we know who holds our tomorrow. And we know who's in control of every tomorrow that we may come and come to face. Just like Joshua, you have to trust God and put your faith into action when God says he will deliver, you must believe. Despite how rocky the road is, despite how outnumbered you are, despite how uneasy you feel, when God speaks, be ready, get ready. Holy Temple, I want you to get ready for your tomorrow. Don't try to question it, don't try to put your intelligence in it, don't try to make backup plans, don't try to rush him. All you need to do is let go and let God have 
have his way. God is not a man that he should lie, and his word never comes back to him. Boy.